Hello everyone, I just returned from Berlin where I was playing in a tournament of Star Wars Unlimited Planetary Qualifier, which is like the first ever competitive season of the game. Now, to my happiness, I ended up being six wins and one loss. We played seven rounds of Swiss, it was 90 players, and with that kind of result, I should be in the top eight. I should be actually fourth or maybe fifth out of the 90 players, which would result of me being in the finals and the playoffs for the championship, because top eight is being cut into the uh, playoffs system. Now, I ended up being not in the top eight, but not only that, I got disqualified while I was being repeatedly lied to by the organizer, gaslight, and also just straight up disrespected. This is going to be a story about this entire event. It's going to take a while because I'm going to go through every single round with every single... Ob not, not objective because I'm a subjective person because it implies, you know, I am in this event. But the facts are on my side and I'm going to present to you what happened during this event and what kind of solution... I would like to see being done at the end of this video. But also, please remember, this has nothing to do with fantasy flight games. This has nothing to do with Star Wars Unlimited. I love the card game. I think it's the best card game I have ever played in my life, and I played a lot of them. And I would like to have real fun with this game for the next years to come. But this event organized by the company called Funentainment in Berlin, absolutely put a big stain on my enjoyment of the game right now. So I'm directing this video to hopefully FFG employees who are going to watch this and are going to respond to my email with a formal complaint that I'm going to send after recording this video. Now, all right, let's uh, get into the nitty gritty. And it's actually starting with a really funny story. And I swear, this is really relevant, okay? So I was meant to travel to Berlin with my friend Richard from my hometown. We were meant to wake up at 6 a.m. Sorry, not wake up, but meet up at 6 a.m. at my house to travel to Berlin, which will take around three hours. The tournament was meant to start at 10, so we had one hour of, um, you know, brackets, essentially, to, to not get uh, surprised by any random events on the highway. And um, right now, it's, by the way, it's 1.28 a.m. on Sunday, so almost 24 hours passed since that time. And I'm recording this because everything is fresh still, right? So that's why I'm doing this video. So at 6 a.m. I was meant to meet with him and we should travel, but he doesn't show up and I call him for half an hour. I just call him like 10 or 20 times and he doesn't pick up. I don't have his new address, so I cannot pick him up because I don't know where he lives right now. So after half an hour of waiting, I'm like, can't do anything. So I have to go because otherwise I'm going to be late to the tournament. So I travel alone, alone and I travel to Berlin. I arrive at 9.30. I come to the event. I see a lot of people. I see a lot of uh, friendly faces from my hometown uh, because they traveled with their own cars. And we uh, line up and we will go to the sign up. This is also relevant. So in the sign ups, they ask for the for the name. They don't get the deck list because they will get them during the first round when we sit down. But they do record our names on a list. So I give them my name. They write it down, which is like a check-in, a pre-check-in or something, like a players meeting stuff, right? So um, after that, uh, we sit down. I, uh, I shuffle my deck and so on. And my friend also says to me, wait, those... Those um, sleeves you have are a little bit weird. Maybe you should talk to um, to the head judge if they are okay. And uh, because they were new, they were dragon shields, white dragon shields. So they were a little bit transparent on the top. And that was a concern. So I went to the head judge to say hi and ask 
if I should change my sleeves because I do have a second pack of different sleeves of the Game Genic sleeves uh, of Star Wars Unlimited, um, and uh, and the head judge che checked my um, my sleeves, said please exchange those two because they had factory defects or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I exchanged two two of them. And I didn't have to change anything else. The point is I'm making a connection here with the judge. So he knows I have good intentions as well. So uh, after that, we sit down at the first round. And I kid you not. I'm being paired against my friend from my hometown. And I do have a receipt over here. So I'm going to show it to you. Right here, you can see this is a screenshot of the first round. As you can see, I'm playing against Richard233, who is my friend, who didn't show up to my home, didn't travel with me, and didn't check in in the initial, you know, thing that I did during the tournament, before the tournament. So I got paired against him. And I'm surprised because they did a check-in first with the players who actually arrived physically at the event. All right, so as you can see also relevant here, match table number 24. I'm just assuming because it, it paired me with my friend who didn't show up, I'm just going to get a win and I just go to round two and that's it. But it turns out the plan was different. So what the tournament organizers did was... They delayed the start by a few minutes. They gathered all the players who didn't have a pair in front of the uh, judge table. And it was five of us. So the tournament started with five people not having a pair. Right? So instead of giving all of those five people a buy and dropping the player that didn't show up but was still in the tournament. I don't know how that happened because they checked the names, but it did happen. So instead of doing that, they manually repaired those, those five people, so including me, into new pairs. So four of them got to play and the fifth one still got a buy. I was the fifth player that got the buy. So I was like, eh, whatever, you know, it's like nothing changed, right? Well, actually something did change. And again, I have for this a receipt as well. So I'm going to show it to you. Remember that my, um, my match against Richard was in match table 24. Now, as you can see here, this is all of my matches that I've played. Um, uh, I have played during this tournament. Let me zoom out a little bit, maybe. Can I? You know what? I mean, I, I'm going to actually close my camera. So as you can see here, in round one, it changed from table 24 to table 20, as you can see here. All right. So I get the 2-0 win, um, and I guess all is good. Well, not exactly. Before round one ends, I notice in the melee system because all of it all of it was in digital by the way we didn't, didn't have paper slips and boy oh boy i wish we had so when i check before the round before round one finishes like 10 minutes into round one i look at my phone and i see but wait i have a win but i have zero points so i go to the head judge that i already got to know from the before round one, when I was speaking to him about the sleeves, and I report to him the issue that I have zero points, although I do have a buy, so I should have a win. He says, oh, okay. Goes to his laptop, does something, and says, it's fixed now. I say, okay, cool. And I go back, and I watch the matches, I look at the meta game, I enjoy watching my friends playing the game. And... When the round ends, we go into round two. So in round one, I got a buy with the repay ring. 
manual repairing over here as well, right? So round one, buy into manual repairing. When round one finishes, we get into round two. Now in round two, as you can see here, round two, I get paired against Suado, who by the way is a member of KTOD Discord, so is also uh, Dippy here, who played with round seven, and Torian, if I'm not mistaken, who played in round three. And since we are members of the same community, we actually well, spoke like, you know, friends who, who exchange uh, uh, opinions. So I asked him, because I see myself being at number 22 table, right? I was like, wait, what? Like, how is that possible? I got a buy, but somehow I'm being paired into a lower table? Like, something is not correct over here. So I ask him, what is his score? And Suado says he's at zero and one. So round two, I'm being paired versus a player who is zero and one when i am one and zero after the buy now the thing is straight up after learning this knowledge right here i stand up and i ask the head judge if he's sure if the problem that i reported during round one was fixed because it should not be the case that someone with a buy will be paired against a person with a zero and one unless the software that we play in with applies um the lowest possible tie breaks to the buy in which case i would rather play a game against anyone than have a buy but i digress that's not really important but since he said no it's for sure fixed it's okay then i take his word because he's the head judge and he was repairing the problem that he's right and mini system just gave me really bad scores for the tie breaks. So we play the game and I win. We go to round number three. And as you can see here in round three, I am after winning another match. I'm being lowered to table number 25 from 22 after winning two matches every single time i'm being lowered down so in round three when i'm being 2-0 i'm being paired versus a player who is one and one one and one so i'm being paired down now two rounds in a row which is super odd for me so I go to the head judge and tell him again that something is iffy and either I'm being giga unlucky or something is wrong. He says I should not worry. It's all good. I play the game. I win. And then I go into round four. When I'm 3-0, right? 3-0 at the beginning of round four i'm being paired versus a person who is two and one at this point i don't even like go up to the head judge but what i do in front of every single player in the room i wave to him and i say hey i got paired down again as a joke essentially at this point Right? And he just smiles back and is like, eh. And, but, but the thing is, when you take a look at the tables, I'm being at the table number nine. So I'm just thinking, well, maybe it is okay. You know? Like, it seems okay. Number nine, when I'm three and zero, yeah, seems okay. Now, the problem is, and that's actually after winning this, this next match, when I become 4-0, something interesting happens those are the standings after round four i am here at the lowest four zero pay attention also to my tiebreaker over here um it shows the lowest possible tiebreaker from the first most important one obviously it's being lowered down because of the problems but the thing is that this is like 
it happens every single t every single round. So now, what I wanted to for you to pay attention to is that we have six people that have four zero. But what happens is, in round number four, in round uh, sorry, in round number five, when I'm four zero, I'm being paired against a player who is three and one. We have six people with four and zero. So it should be all of the four zeros against other four zeros. So we end up with three people having five and oh, and three people having four and one, unless double losses happen. But both me and the eventual winner of the entire tournament, Sobek, also a buddy from my hometown, who was three at one, three and one, at round uh, after round four, he got paired up. So Sip from my hometown, who was four and zero, got paired against our friend who was three and one, and I got paired at four and zero against someone else from from different community that was three and one. That's the big disconnect, or like it's super visible here that something is not right. And I again tell the head judge. I got again paired down. Something is incorrect. I get again told, do not worry. It's all good. Now, in this, in this round, um, let me just refresh my memory. This was uh, round five, so I was playing against Luca E. Okay, so this was the my only loss, essentially, because it was a double loss. I was playing against a Palpatine Blue, a terrible matchup for me, by the way. And we double lost. So after this round, when I double lost, I went to the head judge again to mention to him that, look, if I, if I don't win the next two matches, I am essentially fucked, no? Because the tiebreakers are just horrible. So will there be a problem or anything? He says, no. Uh, I'm like, okay, well, hopefully. So then... In round six, when I'm four, um, I don't know how to write this. I guess four zero one because it's a double loss. Let's assume that let's just call it four zero one. Okay, so four zero one because I have one double loss, which is essentially a loss, right? I'm being paired against a player who was three and two. You see the problem, no? I'm paired against a really cool guy who was playing hand to um, ECL. He is three and two, and I'm four and one. So I essentially avoided all of the players who were doing well in the tournament by playing all of those rounds. But I didn't do this on purpose, and I established there's a problem that I communicated to the judges every single time during those rounds. So now I play against a player who is three and two. I win. And in round seven, after landing the three and two, right? I go up to the head judge and I say, if I don't win the last round, we're going to have some issues because I will be fucked on tiebreakers and I will not like this because something was wrong with the pairings. I told him that. But if I win, we'll not have an issue because I will be guaranteed top 8 anyway. That's how I communicate to the head judge. And he just nods and just says, yeah, hopefully you win. So I'm going into round 7 with a scoreline of 5 wins and 1 double loss. And I'm being paired down against Dippy from the KTOD Discord as well. Who is... Um, Four and two. Sorry, I had to refresh my memory. He, he's, he told me that he was four and two. And the thing is, I specifically know that because every single round when I sit down across my enemy, <laughs> sorry, against my opponent, I ask them specifically about that because I'm reinforcing my feeling that something is incorrect. So when I sit down 
I again ask my opponent about his scoreline and I wave to the judge, I'm paired down, as I do every single round. So I tell my opponent, opponent that, man, this sucks. I have to win to, if I want to have the top eight. If I lose, I'm def I'll probably definitely be out. And he's like, I'll probably not even be in the top eight if enough I win. Because it would be a 5-2, but only like two or three 5-2s will be even in the, in the top eight. Um, so we, we talk about it. I win. In the end, I had some really ridiculous draws, I think. And I played well. So I win. And I become 6-1. and one. And in that moment, when I win, and I am 6-1, and one, in my head, I am ecstatic. Because this is the first ever Star Wars Unlimited tournament on an international level that I attend. And I had a great metagame call, and I didn't tell, and I won't tell you even which character I played right now, because I want sympathy points, and I will not get them if I tell you that I played Boba. So I think I made a great metagame call, and I went with Boba ACL. I had this matchup completely practiced for over a month and I knew what I'm doing I had great sideboard choices and I was playing on point during the entire event I was really playing well and I'm very critical towards myself when I play any game so when I go and I have a 6-1 after I defeat Dippy I go yes because I know I locked in a top 8 and I have the chance to win the entire tournament. I feel it's my tournament to win because of what I mentioned before. And I have the chance to get to the secret event that the winners of this w event will get to next year. So I'm super excited. So after celebrating my win, I just want to remind you, this is what I see on my own melee page, right? Win, 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 draw, win, and win. There's no way I am not in the top eight. I am guaranteed a top eight spot at probably fourth or fifth place. Maybe even third, depending on how the other players were doing. But what I have seen happened is when I go to the actual scoreboard, I see this. Oh, sorry. This is the scoreboard that I see. I am at 18th place with somehow five wins and two losses and 13 and two small points. Pressing the get help button didn't help, by the way. So now I'm like, what the fuck? It's seven rounds of Swiss, but I, I literally see that I won all of my games apart from this one, right? So why am I 18th now? I... You told me that everything was fixed. So I walk, walk up to the judge straight up after the top, after the seven rounds finished. After like two minutes, when we realized, and my friends realized that as well, that I am not in the top eight, even though I'm six and one. So I go there and I'm saying something is not correct. I should be in the top 8, I am 6-1, it's math mathematically impossible for me to not be in the top 8, and somehow I am not. They tell me to wait, they'll investigate. So I wait, because why would I not wait? I have no reason to not trust them. So I wait around, I don't know, 15 minutes I think? The perception of time was a, is at that point a little bit skewed. We had grueling seven rounds of, of Swiss, which I felt like my brain was fuming. And, and I'm ecstatic because I got the top eight. And then suddenly, after some time, they start just announcing players to pick up the prizes. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I, I go to the head, the head judge and I say, wait, 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 don't, don't announce the top eight. Like... What's, what's up here? And he takes me aside. The hedger that I was speaking during the entire event. And he tells me that unfortunately there's nothing they can do. Because for some reason I'm just being counted down 
with with just one loss uh, sorry one loss more than I should have and there's nothing they can do and I say to him in like in a little bit of panic I'm like please stop announcing the top eight like this is not correct like I I I should be in the top eight please stop announcing the top eight because someone should not be in the top eight and he will get the info that he's in the top eight and then you have two people that get pissed not only me who should be in the top eight, but if that person now gets to know that he's in the top eight, but then he gets told, nah, 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 because that guy actually had a mistake and now you're off, he will be hurt as well. So I tell him to stop. But he says, nah, 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 we have to do it. But I'm, I'm saying him, this is unacceptable. Please fix this because this is actually inc incorrect. It's impossible that this is the actual score that is in the scoreboard and the software is wrong so please fix this because you know that i did everything in my power i was proactive in fixing this problem and you told me it's fixed he goes away and uh, after a few minutes again they still announced the winners that they gave out the prizes by the way i didn't get anything no prizes were given to me by the way and after like some time i can't remember exactly maybe it was five minutes maybe it was 10 i can't remember exactly um there's another judge joining or, or, or manager of the store uh, at some point the the head judge changed into two other people that were working at this event and um, uh, one of them was in a different shirt uh i think his name was thomas uh i think he was a manager of the store and uh, the other guy was just a different judge. And they, they said to me the same thing that, they, that the head judge said. It can be fixed. Sorry, but um, we can't do anything. And I say again, it's unacceptable. Like I was trying to tell you that there's a problem for every single round. And you said to me that it's fixed. And please fix this now. Because I am being absolutely fucked. Not because of my choice, but because of yours. And at that point, I realized that because they made the mistake in the first round and didn't fix it, the entire event has no competitive integrity. Because I got paired down with people that I should have not been played against, and the people that I defeated should have never faced me. Every single pairing maybe not every single one, but majority of the pairings in this tournament were incorrect. And everyone, people didn't know about this, but everyone was hurt by the mistake in round one that included my buy. Because it changed almost every single pairing just to accommodate me to be pared down every single round. Now, they go again away to discuss it. They try to fix it in, in Millie again. And in the meantime, I get into my uh, fixing mode where I try to reach out to friends in, in, uh, in, the, in the Polish distribution, in uh, the KTOD Discord. I'm trying to find some contacts to FFG, um, anything that can help me. Some people, and by the way, big shout out to the people at the store who were siding with me telling them that they saw me report the issues every round and they were backing me up in case someone tried to gaslight me and also the people online who are trying to fix this issue with some judges on a discord for judges i i don't have access to it i got told by friends that that was happening so thank you very much for everyone who was involved in this like i never asked anyone to do this and i really appreciate all of you so Someone gets me a screenshot with a solution to this problem. So I give this screenshot to the organizers because apparently this is the fix. This is how you fix this in Melee to correct the results. And they again try to fix it. Five minutes pass. People are getting out of the store. The top eight players are staying with the one guy who should not be in the top eight, by the way, because he now thinks that he's in the top eight. And they, 
they sit down and they wait and they will wait probably for like more than 40 minutes now or and will they will even wait in even more because i'm still there yapping about how this is unacceptable because it is so they tried to fix it again and after a few minutes they invite me behind the desk to see on the screen myself like i don't see it on my own uh, phone that it cannot be fixed at that point i feel like i have to do something so i propose other fixes i'm telling them that please if you can fix this in this event there's another way of fixing this problem you create a new planetary qualify event or like any event you invite manually the eight players including me who should be in this top eight and you kick out the player with the worst tiebreakers from the 5-2 and you tell them sorry and you compensate the i don't know like inconvenience you would call it right because you got told you're top eight but you're actually not top eight but you have 5-2 right so and i tell them to do that they say they can do that i ask why they say because they have to use the melee event that they have and i say do you have to report this through this only event to ffg is that required i don't get an answer but they say they cannot do a new event and i'm saying but you are literally having a competitive integrity problem right now at your competitive event that should be up should be upholding higher standards of play your current event not only had mismatched pairings in every single round of swiss but now you're also putting people in the top page who should not be in the top eight but you're putting a person who should be in the top eight out of top eight it cannot be more fucked up so i tell them to do that to do a new event invite uh people like by hand or just straight up do the event on a piece of paper like we did it in the 90s and by the way if you don't know i'm 39 years old and i was a manager of a hobby store who organized tournaments in magic in warcry in world of warcraft tcg in um uh, in everything and i was doing those tournaments myself and i know problems happen and you don't take a piece of software over logical thinking you try to fix it in any meaningful way and it's especially important right now as well because we don't even have a ranking like none of those, none of those results are being uploaded anywhere like no one takes no one cares this is just a local event at a competitive level that is then being just probably reported with an email or something to ffg maybe i'm wrong but that would be my assumption because why why, why else would you like uh, whatever so at that point i'm being told that this is not possible again that this is not possible it cannot be fixed and we are sorry but you're out of top eight and that's the end of discussion i'm getting agitated at that point because not only i was proactive in fixing this problem since round one even round zero right because before the round one finished i already reported that i have something incorrect in my points because i have a zero point after a buy so just at the beginning of the tournament i reported that i reported that round two round three round four round five round six and round seven every single round i was reporting the same thing starting from round four it was more of a running joke around the fucking tables than anything else so i'm being proactive i cannot do anything else i'm being lied to repeatedly that it's fixed but it's not and then i'm being told it doesn't matter because it cannot get fixed and i just essentially have to make peace with it so when that happens i'm saying and i'm gonna paraphrase the paraphrase because i don't exactly remember the perfect like combination of words that i used but the message the message that i conveyed to the two managers or the judge and the manager that was standing in front of me and that was in front of all the players that were still there i said that this is absolute incompetence i cannot believe 
what I'm watching. And you have to be aware that this thing that happened here right now is going to get picked up by every single member of the Star Wars Unlimited community. Content creators will do videos about this, about this shit show, and it's going to be a shitstorm. And I'm going to do a video too about it. When I say that, the manager gets upset and tells me that I'm being disqualified because I'm threatening them with making a video. So I ask him, am I disqualified? He says, yes. So I say, thanks. I'm going to pick up my stuff and go. I get my stuff. I get out of the store. Um, I cool down a little bit on site before I start walking to my car. I get into the car and I drive home here to record this video. I got disqualified from a tournament where I won six rounds, where I should have been in the top eight fighting for a dream. And instead, three fucking human beings that should have been upholding a position of trust in the community as the tournament organizer and a judge lied to my face and did everything in their power to make me feel sad, depressed, powerless, and essentially robbed. When I drive back home, after an hour in the car, I get a ping from a friend to check the melee link. And I will show it to you right now. So this is the, I'm going to refresh it just so you're aware that this is not, you know, fake or anything. I refreshed the, the scores. See, this is the same thing that I showed you before. Six people with 4-0. Then around five, there's only one person with 5-0 because of the pairing down that happened to two people with 4-0. Um, I'm here after the double loss. I'm kicked down to number 14. But then next round... I'm being on number eight, and so on and so on. And look at this. This is an hour after I was disqualified of the, from the tournament. An hour after my disqualification. Somehow, in some way, in the final standings of the tournament, I'm on the fifth place. And the person who played in the top eight is number nine. This person played in the quarterfinals, even though he should have never been in the top eight. And I don't know who that is. I didn't play against him. I don't have any personal connections to this, to this person. For me, it's just a name. But this person should have never played in a top eight, should have never played against Michael uh, in the top top eight, I don't know why it says top sixteen, but it should have been a top eight. So he should have never played against Michael because he should not have been in top eight. So how on earth is my position fixed now? After I I was being told for an hour, and I got disqualified. Sorry, after, after an hour of, of conversations and trying to fix the issue, I was being repeatedly told that it's not possible to fix and I am out of contention for a top eight because the system thinks that I am five and two, but I'm actually six and one. And somehow, an hour after the disqualification, because I'm trying to defend my score and the way that I played the game and the, the facts behind me, I tried to defend myself somehow I get disqualified for being that person that wants to get what's his, what belongs to me, that position in the paid. And then after an hour, it somehow magically gets fixed. And now I'm in a top eight. This is a joke. I don't understand how this tournament organizer Funtainment Berlin can act this way. They were a way of fixing this problem in numerous ways. 
But one of the worst things as well is that not only they didn't want to find another fix after saying it's, it's not fixable, they didn't want to research anything, they, they also never proposed any compensation for my loss, which was huge, by the way. I never even gotten a participation promo or any prizes because I got kicked off the venue after being disqualified. I actually can't remember if I said this in this video or not, so I'm gonna add one more thing. When I, um, when I was being disqualified, maybe I already said this, but I, I can't remember, it's 2, 2 a.m., 2, 2, 10 a.m., so I, I'm just gonna repeat myself. When I got disqualified, I said that I want a written statement of the events that happened here, signed by the store, by the people who were talking with me right now, so I can attach this to my formal complaint that I will send to Fantasy Flight Games about this event. I got refused that request. Uh, they said they will not do it. I ask, in this case, if you don't want to write it, let's record a video with you confirming the events that occurred. They refused to make a video. When they did that, they refused the written statement, they refused the video with me on camera to confirm what I'm saying. I said, in this case, I feel that I have to record a video with the witnesses that are standing here and seeing all of this unfold because otherwise you will gaslight me out of anything I say. At this point, I'm being physically forced to not record any videos. My phone is being grabbed by one of the judges and I'm being told to leave the store. I don't record the video with any of the witnesses because I just feel threatened by those people and I just leave the store completely upset. So now I'm recording this video with all of this hopefully being structured because, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff that happened um, during this event. And again, I want to reiterate what I said at the beginning of this video. Don't put any blame on Fantasy Flight Games. They didn't organize this tournament. It was organized by Funtainment Berlin. All of the actions that happened during this event were responsibility of the organizers and the judges working at the event. None of them showed any competence. I would even say that it was actually malicious intent to some degree that damaged me as a player and permanently damaged um, the community spirit, I would say, because everyone there was affected by this. Every single person was affected by this. And I hope that this video and the formal complaint that I will send tomorrow to FFG will get to people that uh, will care about this. And I would absolutely love if the people at FFG would reach out to me in any form, email, Twitter, or even on Twitch or, or YouTube here, uh, and to speak to me. And I would like to get at least some kind of, I don't know, or at least acknowledgement. But it would be awesome if I wouldn't have been robbed of this chance of going to the secret event next year. So if you want to invite it to me, that would be fantastic. That would make it all okay. Also, FFG, if you want a commentator for Star Wars Unlimited for your official tournaments, please hire me. I will be delighted to make commentary about your game, about the competitive events. I had 10 years of casting experience in Hearthstone, in Teamfight Tactics, in Valorant. I was the official caster for Blizzard, for Riot and TFT, and for the VCT Valorant Champions Tour in Valorant. 
I can be your guy for Star Wars Unlimited too. All right. Guys, um, if you reach to end, to the end actually, thank you very much for watching. If you can signal boost this and show this to your friends that play Star Wars Unlimited, to literally learn from this because none of you should ever experience what I experienced today. And now at least you know that something like this can happen in the Melee software. And maybe because of that, all of you will be um, speaking to the judges in a more convincing fashion than I did, I guess. All right. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, you know what? Uh, one more thing. I wanted to do a tech, deck tech video today because, you know, I got it paid, right? So it will be awesome. But I guess I'll do that in two days or three days. And I'll talk about the deck that I played during the event and I'll break down how it works because I love the game. And I hope you guys love the game as well. Bye-bye.